Right, so we're here with Tobias at uh, the Tubutech stand. Hi, nice to, nice to see you. <laughs> Great. And uh, yeah, what have you got? What have you brought to Superbooth this year? Well, we brought the MC202 mod, which is now available. We already sh showed it last year, but that was a prototype, and now it's finally finished. So it's an upgrade for the original MC202, and it brings a lot of new features. A completely, a completely new sequencer with uh, 32 patterns that you can chain. You can edit patterns while another one is running. You have a pretty amazing arpeggiator with some special features that I haven't seen anywhere else, actually. Also a Euclidean mode for the arpeggiator, which is pretty nice. And there are a lot of modulations like extra LFOs, extra envelopes, uh, adds noise with various noise colors and so on. Yeah, and it's now available um, for 250 euro. And yeah, and we will also put it in the RE202, which is an upcoming project by Dinsync. And they will use the same CPU, same display. It's pretty much it's a replica of the original MC202. So if you like, you can build your own now. Amazing. What, the whole unit you can yeah. build? Oh, wow. It will be available as a kit. Amazing. Wow. When, when will that be available? Uh, we don't know yet because we're not quite involved in it, just a little bit, but I think probably next year or so. Oh, my God. The guy standing behind me then, Simon, will love that as well. <laughs> Great. As, and what else have you got? You have these yeah, tuning modules we as have well. Too. Yeah, it's a, it's a microtune module. It's actually a MIDI to CV, CV to MIDI and quantizer and clock generator. And you can load scales from the SD card. You can work microtonally. You can also edit the scales. You can use it to distribute MIDI, CV, clock all over your rack. And that works as two channels with the main module. But we also have expanders, so you can add up to eight channels total. And you can select which functions are happening. So for example, you could have a four-voice polyphonic MIDI interface on four channels, but use quantizer on the other channels or mix that. It's very versatile and you can do a lot of things. Even if you're not into microtonal work, you can use it. And um, you can also tune your VCOs. So if your VCO is not in tune over a range of five, six octaves, you can adjust for that. And it can even listen to your VCO and tune it in real time. And we're very happy that it's now available again because we weren't able to produce it for three years. And now it's back. Great. And then where are these available? Um, pretty much everywhere, I think, uh, in our shop, but also, you know, the usual Eurorack shops, you will find it there. Excellent. And how much are they? How much is this tuning module? It's uh, 340 for the base unit and then, not sure, probably 170, 180 for an expander. Expander. Cool. And you also have a 606 module? Yeah, we have a, the 6 Mod 6 which is uh, a TR-606 with original circuitry, but with a lot of mods <laughs> added. It can always sound like the original 606, but you can go crazy and do a lot to the sound. And there's a sequencer, which can be used with the, the six, uh, Mod 6, but which can also be used standalone. It's an eight-channel trigger or gate sequencer, Great. with, of course, a lot of functions. Um, like uh, song mode with various patterns, probability, swing, ratcheting effects, live mute modes, and so on and so on. Nice, amazing, man. And uh, I know your product line so well. You also have these organ conversions, don't you? Yes, we Can do a lot of um, vintage synthesizer upgrades. So one of the newer things are is um, a universal interface for string machines and organs. You can use that to interface it with MIDI, so we install MIDI input. And one of the other new things is an interface for the Yamaha SK15, SK20, SK30, and SK50D synthesizers. That's uh, really easy to install, drop and repl CPU replacement. And it adds MIDI input, of course, but also an additional uh, LFO and a few other nice features that were really missing in the original synthesizers. Great, and and in terms of like fitting them, like the MC two hundred two, like what sort of what sort of soldering level do you say? But usually, like the the amount of soldering is very little, and people can do it by themselves. Uh, but in the case of the MC two hundred two, we actually have a list of synth techs around the world who can do the install for you. 
because it's a little bit more involved. You need to be able to solder SMD and desolder SMD. Some people can do it. Some people have, have, have done it successfully, but usually we recommend to contact a SynthTech. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for showing us, Tobias. Really yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.